In this lesson, we're going to learn about the different factors that affect the speed of reaction, how they affect the speed of reaction, and why do they affect the speed of reaction. Now, there are five factors that affect the speed of reaction, and they are concentration, pressure, particle size, temperature, and catalyst. So, how exactly do they affect the speed of reaction? When the concentration of reactants increases, the speed of reaction will also increase. Now, this is the reason why we um, get the shape of the graph that we saw in the previous lesson, um, where the gradient is the steepest at the beginning, it decreases in the middle, and it reaches zero at the end. Now, this is because at the start of the reaction, there is the most amount of reactants present. So the concentration of your reactants um, will be the highest. As the reaction proceeds, more and more reactants are used up. So the concentration of reactants decreases and hence the speed of reaction decreases as well. Now, when pressure increases, when pressure uh, of a system of reacting gases increases, the speed of reaction will increase. When the particle size of solid reactants decreases, the speed of reaction will increase. When the temperature of a reacting system increases, the speed of reaction will increase. And when a catalyst is being used in a reaction, the speed of reaction will increase. Now that we have learned how the different factors affect the speed of reaction, let us take a look at why they affect speed of reaction in this way. In order to know how the different factors affect or why the different factors affect speed of reaction, we need to learn something called the collision theory. And there are two main things that we need to know about collision theory. One, for a chemical reaction to occur, particles must first collide. Only when they collide, a reaction can possibly occur. And not only that, when they collide, they must collide with sufficient energy which is the minimum energy required for a reaction to occur. All right. So in order for a reaction to occur, when particles collide, they must have energy greater than or equals to the activation energy. So having said that, not all collisions will lead to a reaction. Only collisions, involve, uh, only collisions involving particles having energy greater than or equals to activation energy will lead to a reaction and such collisions are given a special name they are called effective collisions all right so not all collisions are effective but effective collisions are those that will eventually lead to a reaction now with collision theory in mind there are two fundamental ways in which we can increase the speed of a reaction we can increase it by either one by increasing the frequency of collisions when the frequency of collision increases the frequency of effective collisions will also increase and the second way to increase the speed of reaction is to increase the number of particles having sufficient energy to react when we have a larger number of particles with sufficient energy to react the chances of a, a successful collision of an effective collision also becomes higher so should any of the two factors increase it will increase the frequency of effective collisions Now let us look at the factor one by one, uh, the different factors one by one, and we will see how collision theory can explain how that particular factor affects the speed of reaction. Now when the concentration of, a react uh, of reactants increases, there will be more particles per unit volume. So number of particles per unit volume increases, all right, in a way if there are more particles in a fixed volume the particles are closer together if the particles are closer together the frequency of collision will increase and when the frequency of collision increases 
the frequency of effective collisions will also increase. Now this is the explanation why any increase in concentration of reactants will lead to a higher speed of reaction. Now a common question that students will ask is, um, do I have to write both frequency of collision increases and frequency of effective collisions increases? Aren't they the same? Um, the answer is they are not the same and both needs to be in your answer. Now we'll look at the factor of pressure and before we even go into explaining how colliding particles affect the speed of reaction, it's important to bear in mind that pressure only affects reactions involving gases. All right, so if um, a reaction occurs in solution phase or between solids and solutions, changing the pressure will have no effect on the speed of reaction. Now, in order to increase the pressure um, in a system, usually this is achieved by decreasing the volume. So when the volume is decreased, there will be more particles per unit volume. All right. uh, again, if there are more particles in a fixed volume, the particles will be closer together. And when the particles are closer together, the frequency of collision will increase. And when the frequency of effective uh, when the frequency of collision increases, the frequency of effective collisions will also increase. Now in the third factor we look at particle size. And by particle size we mean it could be in lumps, it could be in uh, chips, it could be in powder. Um, powder would be the one that is the uh, that has the smallest particle size followed by chips and then lumps having the largest particle size. Now when the particle size of a reactant decreases, we are actually effectively increasing the total surface area for available for reaction. All right. uh, in your answer, it's very very important for you to include the word total surface area. All right. uh, reason being, if we simply look at one small particle versus a big particle you will um, realize that the big particle actually has a larger surface area than the small particle but if you were to divide the big particles into small particles and we sum up the total surface area of the small particles you will find that it is in fact larger than one big particle Alright, so when particle size of a reactant decreases, the total surface area for reaction increases. And when there is when the total surface area available for reaction increases, your frequency of collisions will increase and therefore your frequency of effective collisions will also increase. The next factor that we're going to look at is that of temperature. Now when temperature of reacting particles increases, the particles will firstly gain kinetic energy. When they gain kinetic energy, they will move faster and they will collide with more energy. Now if you can remember the two fundamental methods for increasing speed of reaction, that for temperature will actually affect both of them. All right? So when particles have more kinetic energy, they will move faster, frequency of collisions will increase. And when particles have more kinetic energy, the number of particles with energy greater than or equal to activation energy will also be higher. And since these two factors are increased, your frequency of effective collisions will also increase. Now in the last factor that we're going to look at is that of addition of a catalyst. And before we go into how it affects the speed of reaction, we need to um, find out more what is a catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction. All right. um, when a catalyst is used, it's important to remember a few things about catalyst. A catalyst remains chemically unchanged at the end of the reaction. All right. A common misconception that students will have is that catalysts therefore do not take part in the reaction. 
and, and that is not true because catalyst can take part in the reaction and that is regenerated at the end of it so if you look at the um, before the reaction and after the reaction uh, catalyst remains chemically unchanged at the end of the reaction and because they are chemically unchanged you don't have to use a lot you can just use um, a little of the catalyst in order to speed up the reaction for a long time the other thing about catalysts is that they are highly selective and highly sensitive now what do I mean by that highly selective means a catalyst will only can uh, a, a particular catalyst uh, can only work maybe only for one reaction all right if you use the same catalyst for another reaction it may not work so it's highly selective sensitive um, means that a, a catalyst is very sensitive to the conditions of the reaction so certain catalysts will work only over a very narrow temperature range for example 30 to 35 degrees celsius so at temperatures outside the temperature range the catalyst may not work effectively all right some catalysts are also highly sensitive to ph so when the ph changes it can affect the effectiveness of the catalyst now how does a catalyst actually speed up a reaction a catalyst can provide an alternative pathway which involves a lower activation energy all right so one way of showing that one very good way of showing that is by drawing the energy profile diagram now if you can recall in an energy profile diagram the y-axis is energy and then the x-axis is your reaction progress all right now I'm going to use an exothermic reaction for example now in the absence of a catalyst you would have a reaction profile that looks like this all right and if you can recall this will represent your activation energy now when you add a catalyst the catalyst will provide another reaction pathway all right that actually involves a lower activation energy so this is the new activation energy in the presence of a catalyst now what happens when you lower the activation energy is that with a lower activation energy more particles will now have energy greater than or equals to activation energy and when that happens your frequency of effective collisions will increase and therefore the speed of reaction increases so now we have looked at the five different factors that can affect the speed of reaction how they affect the speed of reaction and using collision theory we have learned how to explain how each factor affects the speed of reaction